Jameson Mitchell here, and in this video, I'm wrapping up Howard's Grand Tableau with a technique called Counting Round, so stay tuned. And here we are with the Grand Tableau that's been the focus of this series, and the cards that I'm using are from the Mystical Lenormand. It is by Regula Elizabeth Feichter, and the artwork is by Urban Trausch. And so just to do a brief recap, if you're just joining me in this series, a friend of mine named Howard, a few months back, had asked me to do a reading for him, using the Lenormand cards, about his Akashic Records consulting business that he was starting up. At the time we did this reading, he was trying to get more people interested in what it is that he was doing in his work as an Akashic Records consultant. So we did a reading for that and it was also beneficial to me because at that time I was wanting to gain more experience doing readings for other people so it was a kind of a win-win situation where he got the reading and I got the experience. And so he gave me permission to also broadcast this as a um, a video series because at the time I had a lot of people um, asking me about how I approach a grand tableau and a few of my viewers had asked specifically about how I was looking at uh, the cards in the houses and how do I read those and so I was incorporating that element into each of these videos and rather than trying to make it one very epic long video I decided I was going to do it in snippets and so this brings us to the the final episode the the last step in my grand tableau process I call this technique counting round and I need to give credit where credit is due this is not my technique I got this from Kathleen Matthews who is a divination expert and it comes from her book the Complete Lenormand Oracle Handbook. It's a book that I recommend. I really enjoy it and I've gotten a lot of value out of it. So if you are embarking on a Lenormand journey and you are looking for a reference, that is my own personal recommendation. Um, so you may want to check that out and see if it's something that resonates with you and something that you might want to um, put in your library. So coming back to the reading itself, Another thing that I want to say before I get into it, I want to um, thank everyone who has been following this series and especially for being patient as I produce these videos. My private practice has gotten very busy, which I'm happy to say. But also, too, there is a method to my madness. This last video is being shot now because in... A previous video I had touched on the idea that there may be some developments that take place during um, the winter and especially around Easter and I will point the card that led me to that conclusion here in the Grand Tableau we have the gentleman and the gentleman is my friend Howard and those of you who read uh, Lenormand know that the gentleman card represents a man who is significant to the situation, so this represents Howard. And then he's facing the lilies here, and so the lilies for me as a timing card because him looking that way represents him looking to the future or looking to see what's ahead. And so the lilies is a timing card and it can represent winter and Easter if you think of the lily being associated with the holiday Easter. So. This is why I waited because I know there was one particular viewer who asked for an update, which I may um, provide at a later date because I want to kind of keep this video relatively short. And so I may post that at a later time once I do a, another check-in with Howard. But that was my reasoning for that, is that I wanted to wait until after the Easter holiday to check in with him and to get a, a, an update. So. That is my reasoning for the video being shot now as opposed to being done right after the previous video. And while I mentioned in the previous videos, I will have a link to all the previous videos in this series 
in the description box below if you'd like to check those out if you're just joining or if you just want to check them out again they're all in one place um, I've also created a, a playlist so you can check that out if you go to my channel page you can go right and look for the playlist and all the videos are there as well so in this technique I call counting round basically what it is is that you look at the overall tableau and we're going to take five cards out of the tableau and we're going to do a line of five reading with those five cards and so the way it works is that you want to start with either the significator card if you're dealing with a person or if you've been looking at topic cards you could probably do this with a topic card as well but because I started this series with Howard I'm going to use the gentleman card as the first card so what you do is you want to take the first card and count one so the gentleman here is card number one so you take that out and then you count nine so it would be one two three four five six seven eight nine so now the lady is the second card you want to take that and then start counting off again where the lady was is one two three four five six seven eight nine so the fox is the third card then counting again one two three four five six seven eight nine the child is the next card and then one two three four five six seven eight nine and tree is the last of the five cards so now we have extracted the five cards that we're going to use for the line of five and now I'm going to take a moment to clear the table so I can readjust the card so we can focus on the single line and here we are with the line of five arranged so like I said now we have the gentleman we have the lady we have the fox we have the child and we have the tree and so the counting round technique is similar to the essence line this gives us a final final message for the overall reading so now we have with the line of five we have a new focus whereas we've been focusing the entire reading or the entire tableau from Howard's point of view from the perspective of the significator card the gentleman and when we do a line of five or at least my approach to it is I always look to the card in the middle card number three because that forms the um, the focus or the central issue so Fox in this context because remember Lenormand is always best read in context to the question so in this context Fox is a card of self-employment it's a card of having a craft and having a skill and I also look at it as a strategy so given that context with the situation is that that fits because Howard is working uh, as an Akashic Records consultant as his form of self-employment he has a skill and he's been looking on how to get more people interested in that skill and so that whole idea of how to get more people interested is a strategy in a way so I'm looking at it from that so this makes perfect sense in light of what we've been exploring in this series with this question so one of the other things that I do I start looking out so I look to the card card number two and the card uh, card number four on each side of the central card as to give me a little bit more about the topic in depth so we have lady and we have child so the best way to read that and I'll do it like this so we can see that we're focusing on that pair so the way we can do that is we can read there's a new woman because the child can represent something that's beginning something that's starting something that's new and so if we're going with that context it would child is describing the woman the lady card is nothing more than a woman and so we need to look at the cards that are next to the lady to somehow describe the lady or give us more information about the lady so the child would be a, a new woman it could also be a woman who has a child if we go with the literal because Lenormand can be quite literal so it could be not only is this a new woman coming into the picture but she may actually have a child or children of her own so that's how I would look at that then we could br go to the next two cards here on opposite ends so we have the gentleman on one side and we have the tree on the other so 
going with the context again, the gentleman is Howard, and then the tree on the other end would be something that describes Howard. So I'm looking at it. If we take the two cards and we go like this for a moment, we have some direction here because the man is looking at the tree. So the tree for me is a card that represents health and healing and well-being, but in this context, it can also be about something that's growing, something that's developing, something that needs um, time or requires patience because the tree takes a long time to grow. And the last thing about that, I have come up with the meaning that the tree can represent going with the idea of growth and development that we are looking to branch out. So I'm going to go with that and say that the man is looking forward or looking to the future for ways to branch out um, in terms of the growth and development of his business, keeping with the idea of Fox being the central card. So that's how I'm seeing it. So again, would be the man looks to the future or looks to branch out in the future, but also with the idea too that it's going to take some time and, and require some patience because this is the future, so the tree takes a long time to grow. So that's how I would look at that. So now moving these cards back, the next thing we can do is we can look at the two cards to the left of the fox card. And they could represent the past or you know something that's triggering the situation. So we have gentlemen and we have lady. So really, it doesn't say anything more than that there's a man and a woman. So that's the easiest way to say that. So And they're looking at each other. So here's the thing. So now, if this was a relationship-oriented question, this would be a fantastic thing because the man and the woman are facing each other, which means that they are in agreement, that they are close, that it's a good um, relationship. So keep that in mind. So it could be like Howard, since he's looking at the woman, it could be Howard, you know, uh, uh, meets a woman in the future, and they form some kind of relationship now. In the previous episodes, we had talked about you know, the idea of him working with the woman because the woman and the man card, or the gentleman card, were like this in the grand tableau. So they were still close. So now here they are facing each other. We're here where one was that one was on top of the other. So now here they are facing each other. So it could be a similar kind of relationship, but a different kind of energy. So that's the man and the woman. And then here on the other side of the fox, we have something that could happen down the line. Yes, I did say that. I'm including the pun. <laughs> down the line, you know, something in the future. So here we have child and we have tree. So going with the idea that child can represent, like I said before, something that's starting, something that's beginning, um, something that's new, and then the tree would represent growth and development and branching out. It could be um, the beginning of growth and development, going with the idea that the child is beginning and then this would be growth and development. So, or, you know, the beginning of branching out or beginning to branch out. So that's how I would look at those. So that's how I would look at that combination. And then we could look at the cards closest to the central issue, which would be the fox. So we have lady and the fox. And so going with the idea that the fox represents self-employment, it represents skill, it represents um, a craft, and it represents strategy, with the woman here, now it could be describing the woman, so fox in this regard could be saying that the woman is self-employed, the woman is skilled, the woman has a strategy, or the woman with a strategy, and that the woman is clever, because those are all the things um, I use to describe fox. And so... That would be attributes of the woman. And then looking to the other side, we have fox and child. And so going with the idea that, again, fox is skill, strategy, and self-employment, these two cards could be read as a new skill, a new strategy, and that self-employment begins. So, and then now that I said that, I'm looking at the final three cards. So it could be self-employment begins to grow and develop or a strategy for beginning to branch out. It just jumped at me, so I just figured I'd throw that out there. And so the final thing we can do here with the line is that we can actually look at reading the line from left to right, what I call forward narration. So the best way to read this line for me in the moment is I'm looking at it as a man, which would be Howard, 
and a woman going with the lady strategize with the fox for a craft or a skill still keeping with the fox to begin with the child representing beginning to grow develop and branch out with the tree so again it would be a man and a woman strategize for a craft or a skill to begin to grow develop and branch out and so that would be how I'd read the line the next thing I could do is look at the playing cards now the interesting thing here is that this particular deck doesn't have the playing card inserts but I'm going to go ahead and do that to see what the dynamics could offer in terms of more information about the situation and so the playing cards that are usually associated with the cards that are here in the line would be for the gentleman it's ace of hearts for the lady it's ace of spades for the fox it's the nine of clubs for the child it is the jack of spades and then for the tree we have the seven of hearts so the first thing that strikes me is that we have two cards from the suit of hearts and hearts represents things like love um, romance it could also represent a, a domestic matter or domestic matters or having to deal with relationships generally speaking and notice that they're on opposite ends of the line then we have two spades we have the ace of spades with the lady and we have the jack of spades with the child and so we have two cards from the suit of spades so suit of spades for me can represent service and so keeping in with the context of the question this is a wonderful suit to see because of the self-employment aspect and being a Akashic Records consultant is a form of service so I find it very interesting that we have that but I also like the way they're laid out we have two on the outer ends from hearts and then two on the uh, inside from the suit of spades so that's the first thing that jumps out at me so how I approach the the dynamics is I always take the cards one and two the first two cards and look at adding those pips together so here we have the ace which is one and an ace which is one so one and one is two and the second card in the deck is the clover so the clover if you remember in the grand tableau was the card that was the very first card so here it is again and so it typically represents an opportunity um, some good luck, a little bit of luck, um, some good fortune, um, something that's going to be a, a short-term thing or something that's very brief. So here we have on keeping with the central focus because the dynamics always refer back to the central focus. So the central focus being Fox could be saying too that there's a, a brief or short-term opportunity about a self-employment thing or a um, a skill or a craft so I'm seeing that on the one side here on the other side we have the jack is valued at 11 and then we have the seven of hearts so 11 and 7 is 18 and the 18th card in the deck is the dog so here we have the dog so on the other side of the fox dog for me can represent things like um, it usually can represent like a friendship, partnership, or friend, or a partner, companion in a relationship. But I always read the um, dog in terms of a career question as a consultant or an advisor. And with that, the idea of like somebody who offers help, support, and trust. So I'm going with that aspect of it. So this would be more of like help, support, and trust for me. More the help and support. And if we take the clover, I'll put it here, it's better it's in the shot, and the dog and actually have them form a pair, then it would be an opportunity for help and support. You know, and especially this is regarding being becoming a consultant, becoming because the dog comes after the clover. So it would be something in the future. If we look at it as this is the where we are now and this is where we could be becoming so it's an opportunity now that I said that an opportunity to become a consultant or uh, an opportunity for help and support and going with that then the clover would suggest a brief period of time a short window for that so 
if we go with the idea that the clover is representing the man and the woman and their relationship, it could say that the relationship is going to be brief, it's going to be short term, it's not going to be a, uh, a long term kind of thing, but it could be a relationship that's beneficial for both parties involved because again, going with the idea that clover is something that represents luck and fortune. So I'm seeing that. And then if we go with the um, idea here, put the dog with these two cards, the child and the tree, then it would be the help and support needed or gained for this new um, period of branching out. You know, So in order to branch out, somebody would have to be doing something different and enlisting some help and support to kind of help that uh, come along. So those are the dynamics that regard. So the last thing we can do here is we can take all the pips from the line and add them across. So we have an ace, which is one, and another ace, which is two, a nine, so two and nine is 11. And then we have 11 with the child or the jack. So 11 and 11 is 22, and then seven with the seven of hearts is 29. And so the 29th card is the woman card, and so we have the woman here. So it would just represent, again, reinforcing the idea here. We've had it reinforce a few ways throughout this Grand Tableau series that a woman was going to play a significant role in Howard's um, development with his Akashic Records consultant, um, consultancy or consulting service. So um, the woman is very important. So we will have to check in with Howard to see um, how that turned out, but it, the cards are reinforcing this woman several different ways. So the last thing we can do when I work with a line of five is we can do what I call the essence line. And that would involve looking at all the numbers on all the cards and coming up with a total for that. And so, like I said in the previous segment, I'm going to now take the numbers on all the cards and I'm going to add them together to see what the essence of the whole line is. So we have the gentleman, which is 28. The lady is 29, the fox is 14, the child is 13, and the tree is 5. And so that gives us a total of 89. So the way I do this is, anytime I have a number over 36, because there are 36 cards in the deck, I take the two digits, in this case 8 and 9, I'm going to add them together, and the total is now 17. And the 17th card in the deck is the stork. And so the stork for me can represent change and improvement. So I'm seeing that. So it could be suggesting that overall, as we're exploring this, there's going to be some positive change and there's going to be some improvement with Howard's skill and his craft and the self-employment. So that would be because the essence card, like all the other cards, are relating to the central card. So we're given with the idea that Fox represents skill it represents craft and it represents self-employment, then the stork is a positive sign because it represents uh, positive change and improvement in that area. So this has been Counting Ground, and this brings the whole Howard's Grand Tableau series to a close. I'm James Tim Mitchell. I'm signing off, and before I sign off, I want to thank each and every one of you who asked me the questions about the Lenormand, who found this series very helpful in terms of your own work with Lenormand. I appreciate all the comments that I've gotten. And I just want to thank you for investing your time and energy in this series with me. And I look forward to sharing more Lenormand with you in the Oracle Outlook series. So you can check that out. And I'm hoping as I sign off that you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week. And until we get together again in the future, Take care.